Thank you very much. I'm happy to be back here again. And uh, I'll tell you what I've got planned today. Um, I'm going to do mainly a live demo of Parallels Desktop 14 that came out in August, late August. It's the latest version of Parallels Desktop. And um, I'll show you most of the big new features. I have about a 15 minute demo planned. About one minute uh, on the beginning of it is in case we have people here who have never used a Windows app on their Mac. How many of you have ever used Parallels Desktop, any version? How many have never used any sort of thing that lets you run Windows on your Mac, like Boot Camp or VirtualBox? OK, fine. So I'll give my one minute introductory demo, and then I'll launch right into the new stuff. Um, I, I'll answer questions at the end for as long as you're here and Lauren doesn't pull me off the stage. OK? All right. So I'm going to just talk about Parallels Desktop and what it does. The basic features haven't changed since the first version more than 12 years ago. And the basic feature is it, it gives you the ability to run Windows applications on your Mac without rebooting. Why would somebody want to do that, you're saying? Well, I get love letters from people all the time. I'm the product manager of Parallels Desktop. The canonical letter is something like this. I'm a school teacher, and I believe for my students, the best platform is the Macintosh. But every Wednesday afternoon, I have to connect to the school district server and upload attendance data and grade data, and that only works with IE. That's, that's a trivial task. It's short, but it's so important, it would determine the platform I have to use. But because of Parallels Desktop, I can do that task on my Mac, and I get to keep the Mac and use it with the software I want for my students. So that's the, the, the canonical case. Most people don't run Parallels Desktop 24 hours a day, because if you did that, just go buy a PC. Most people use it because I, I've got one or two programs I have to use that only run on Windows. I want to use the Mac. The Mac is my platform of choice. Or I just want the freedom to not have to worry about it. I want to be able to run a Mac, Mac program if I want, a Windows program if I want, Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows XP even. And Parallels Desktop gives them that freedom. So let me show you the basic idea. I think that's enough slides. Let's go to a demo. So right now, I've got an ordinary Mac window on my screen. Inside this window, Windows is running. Outside, Mac is running. Mac cursor, Windows cursor. Mac cursor, Windows cursor. It's that level of integration. I want to move a file from Mac to Windows. Just drag that file like this over to the desktop. It has now been ported over. It happens to be a Word file. If I double click on it here, I'll open Word for Windows. So as you know, Office is available for the Mac. Office is available for the iPad and for Windows. They're all wonderful programs. But no question about it, the premier one, the gold standard for productivity software is Office for Windows. I'm a Mac user from the get-go, but I, I can't you know, uh, change truth. So if people want to use certain features in Excel, certain features in Outlook, those aren't available in the Mac version. They want to use the Windows version. Parallels Desktop lets them run that on their Mac without having to have a separate, separate piece of hardware. So I can run it like this. This is the way I normally use Parallels Desktop. We call this windowed mode. So our Windows is running in a window, and you have that, that barrier that you see here. This is not the most common way to run Parallels Desktop, however. A very common way is to run it like this. You can't even see that it's a Mac. But you can go back and forth, Mac, Windows, Mac, Windows, like that. That's great. That's very popular. But the most popular way to use Parallels Desktop is this way. I don't even want to see Windows. I just want to use the applications. We call that coherence. And coherence lets you run a Windows application, it sits on your desktop like any other application. You can run it together with an application like Pages or Keynote. 
So here I have a pages file, a pages application with a picker document open and a Windows application. I can copy and paste between them. I can drag and drop between them. That's the level of integration you get with Parallels Desktop. So since its first version till now, mainly what we've been doing is increasing the points of integration, increasing the performance, and increasing the ability for you to run new OSs simultaneously with old ones and like that. I'll show you that in a minute. So this is the basic functionality of Parallels Desktop. Run Windows applications. You can only, don't even have to see Windows on your screen if you don't want to. I happen to prefer the windowed mode because I want to know what's Windows and what's not. I want to drag and drop between them, things like this. That's just my particular use. Over the years, we've added, we've brought over many pieces of goodness from the Mac OS into Windows. An example, I will put my cursor here in this document. You can't see my fingers on the touchpad, but if I use a Mac gesture now, they work. If I want to expand this document, zoom it, shrink it, I just use the standard Mac gestures. We brought Mac gestures over to Windows applications in Parallels Desktop. You don't notice, but we fully support the Retina screen that's here on, on my, my MacBook Pro. That is not, not a trivial thing to do, and it's not automatic. We did that years ago. When we first ran Parallels Desktop on a Retina machine, it was not something I'd want to show you. It was really horrible. And the engineers knuckled down and got it working in a few months and turned out great ever since. I can, in fact, even do this. So here I have Windows 10 running, and here I have Lion running. So I can run other OSs simultaneously. I've had as many as six or seven OSs running simultaneously. That's not a normal thing to do. It's, a, it's kind of strange. And you, do, you, do, are, you are dividing the processor among those seven operating systems. So it's a little bit sluggish, but it's not bad at all. Why would you want to do that? It's interesting. Certain applications can't be run together. You probably know that you can have Office for Mac 2011 and 2013 on the same machine install and run them side by side. That's a supported scenario. Lots of applications don't have that feature. For example, when you install IE in Windows, you get, that's what you get. You only got that version of IE. The old one has now been, now been discarded. So IE versions are not um, compatible with each other. So if you're a, a webmaster for your company, and you know customers use Windows 7 with IE 6, Windows 10 with IE whatever, and they use the Mac, and they use this, you can have all those operating systems open at the same time, change your website. Oh, look, it doesn't work in IE. I'll fix that now. I'm right here with my tools, and I'll be able to do that. And so for that kind of person, running four or five OSs at one time is a dream. For the average person, running two is kind of weird. So what I'm introducing you tonight is the ability to run Windows and Mac simultaneously and have the advantages of both available to you. OK. That's my basic introduction to Parallels Desktop. The average Parallels Desktop user has one virtual machine, one installation of Windows. Today, it's primarily Windows 10. If you're a really strange person, you would have this many OSs running. And I shouldn't say running, I should say installed. With Parallels Desktop, you can install as many OSs as you have space on your hard drive you can run as many simultaneously as you have RAM for. Each of those OSs, when they're running, takes a hunk of RAM and locks it down, and that's not available to anybody else at that time. So to run three OSs at once, like I have that now, takes, takes some RAM. This machine was the first in 2016 of the I, I, um, MacBook Pros to come out with the touch bar. I got it with a lot of RAM, so 16, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a pretty good-sized disk. I have a terabyte disk in here. 
so I can, in fact, install all these OSs and give demos and so on. The, Air, the standard configuration of a MacBook Air that we get from Apple will, will give you the ability to run the Mac OS and one copy of Windows. Probably Windows 10 is what you're going to want. And no problem at all with RAM allocation for that setup. Um, right now, I'm running three OSs. I have Mojave running as the, as the host OS. I have Lion running as a virtual machine. And I have Windows 10 running as a virtual machine. Right away, that puts me in the top tier, or the weird tier, of parallel desktop users. And when you look at all the ones I've got, I'm in the fringes of nutcases running Parallels Desktop. OK. Are there any basic questions about the basic features of the Parallels Desktop that have been around for many years before I jump into the ones that are new in Parallels Desktop 14? Yes? Uh, Linux uh, good question. So the question was, would it, will it run Linux? And the answer is, yes, it will. I have. I'm not much of a Linux user. I have one Linux virtual machine here on my, on my machine, installed and ready to go. When you go to install new OSs, we give you a list of three ones down here you can, you can get from Microsoft or other developers. And there's a whole bunch of Linux distributions that are available with a one-click download to put on your machine. And um, you can do this very easily. To answer your question, so yes, it does run Linux. Almost every distribution I've heard of runs just fine. Question. Yeah, I could, well, I could just comment on that. I'm running Linux Mint, right? Okay. So I haven't used a great feature that Linux has that I'm really interested in. Yeah. 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 Y
and it actually causes the editing to take place in the document. You're editing as you're making little scratches on the document, like this. Here I am. I'm going to want to turn on the ink editor. I'll show you the gestures that are available just for, for grins. And I'll use them. So here I am. I want to break a line here. Done. I want to select this word here. Select it. This is too much space. I want to close this up. And if you're using a, a stylus on a screen, this is really, really natural and fluid. And so we've added this support in Parallels Desktop to make this work with Office for Windows. Office for Mac doesn't have these features because there's no stylus for the Mac. That, that's in Word. Let me show you some of the things that are in PowerPoint. Similar here, we'll also go to the draw menu. We'll pick a pen. And I can turn on a feature called ink to shape. And this allows me to make an approximation of a diagram and have Office turn into a perfect diagram for me. Circles, squares. And I guess you have to be a little more perfect than that. So let's try again. There we go. And I use these a lot. I use shapes a lot in, in PowerPoint because they're a natural way to get a drawing done. And being able to draw them like this and have it converted to a, a, a perfect shape is really great. They added one more feature. I should say they just added one more feature. It came out in Windows uh, Office 2019 this year. Uh, and that is the following. I want to go to a new screen. Let's see. Here I am. Go back to draw. Pick a pen. If you happen to have on your Mac a pressure sensitive stylus, I do. I have a little Wacom tablet here. I pull out the stylus and I start drawing and I press harder. Uh, Press harder, it gets thicker. That's pressure sensitive ink. Thin, and I'm not much of an artist, as you can see here, but people who are talented and skilled in these areas say pressure sensitivity is a really great feature to have. It's in PowerPoint, it's in Photoshop, it's in Illustrator. If you happen to have a Wacom tablet, then great. You'd be able to do this. Wacom has been around for a long, long time. It's the, the favored tablet of many artists. But the Parallels engineers didn't like the idea that a feature they did would only be useful with, with a secondary piece of hardware. They wanted to make it available to you without having to buy anything extra. So if you hold down the function key and draw on your trackpad, you will get pressure sensitive ink without having to buy any new hardware. And it's really slick. It's very impressive in Photoshop. I will admit I'm, not, no, I'm no longer a Photoshop god by any means, and so I don't give demos because it looks so, so lame. But a power, PowerPoint I can deal with. So pressure sensitive ink was added to, power, to Parallels Desktop 14. It came out this summer. Office this fall added it to Office. Uh, Microsoft added it to Office, and so now it's available. It also works to any other application that uses pressure sensitivity in Windows. OK. I want to show you the next new feature in Parallels Desktop 14. It's a feature that you've sort of already talked about or talked about the need for in your question and answer period. But I got to tell you, it's the most boring demo in the world. So I'm not going to demo it. I'm just going to talk about it. And the feature is, if you're moving from an earlier version of Parallels Desktop, say there are Parallels Desktop 12 or 13 to 14, you will automatically get storage back. If you're on a 128 gig MacBook Air, you might get 10, 
12, 15 gigs back. That's significant. You don't have to do anything at all. You just up, update to Parallels Desktop 14, and your drive images will shrink. Drive images can be really, really big. If, if anybody cares about the details of how this works, um, the short version of it is the Mac OS has its own disk optimization mechanisms. Windows has its own disk, disk optimization mechanisms. Mac doesn't know Windows is running there. Windows doesn't know it's running on the Mac, so these would often conflict. But our engineers know both these systems very, very well. They were able to make them work together, so you get the benefit of disk shrinkage. I was the first person outside the engineering team to test this. And what I did was I measured the size of my virtual machines. I then upgraded to 14. It was a beta version of 14 at the time. And then I remeasured. And I got back 26 and a half gigabytes of space. That's a boatload of space. That's really, really great. The engineers were thrilled with my test. They were hoping for maybe 10. So it turned out really, really great. Your mileage can vary. It all depends on a whole variety of circumstances. It's not predictable. And it happens over time for the average user. So as you're using it, the things are getting smaller and smaller until they get down to where they're going to be no, sort of optimized. And you'll just see, wow, I've got more storage than I had before. Because of this, we decided to add some more features for disk optimization. I'll show you those in just a moment to, to, to actually to add to the optimization you get from disk drives also the ability to help you manage your storage more efficiently. So if I go back to Parallels Desktop, and I go here, oops, free up disk space. This is a wizard we've added to Parallels Desktop. It walks through all your virtual machines and tells you what you can save in storage for each one of them by doing a variety of different tasks. You're managing it yourself, but you're in control. So this particular machi virtual machine, I'll get back almost two gigs of space if I do a couple operations. This one here, I have a snapshot, which is sort of a saved version of a virtual machine. If I get rid of that, I get back a whole bunch of storage. If I go here, I could reclaim uh, about half a, half a gig and so on. I happen to have on this machine a boot camp installation because I have to give demos of it. If I wanted to get rid of that, I could get back 40 gigs of space. That's pretty useful. You, you really want to think about that. Is that worth 40 gigs to me? Or would I rather take that installation of Windows and bring it into Parallels Desktop and have that version of Windows, all its applications, all its data available to me in a virtual machine where I didn't have to restart the Mac and restart Windows each time I wanted to use it. For many people, that's going to be, yeah, I, I want to do that. And so we, we let them know what they're going to save in disk space. OK. Next new feature. We know from reports of our users, from our users, that they're successfully using about 200,000 different distinct Windows applications. That's, that's great. We're real happy about that. But there were some that didn't work well in Parallels Desktop 13. Here's an example. I launched this application on my home Mac, running Parallels Desktop 13. The application's name is Sketch SketchUp. It's a CAD CAM application. If you can't read the dialogue in the back, what this says is, your version of OpenGL is not sufficient for me to even launch. I'm going to quit now. Have a nice life, OK? And so then nothing you could do. You, you're completely stopped in the water. And we have a forum on our website where users can, can talk about their experiences and make us suggestions and so on. And one of the most frequently asked requests was, please make SketchUp work. And we want to use this application. So our graphics team worked for about a year. And they changed the way video memory was allocated. They improved the, the, the hooks between Parallels Desktop and OpenGL on the Mac. And here's what the result. So I'm going to launch now SketchUp in Parallels Desktop 14. OK, first of all, it launches. 
So we're right away, way ahead. If I now open up a file, if you aren't familiar with it, SketchUp is a CAD CAM application that allows you to uh, architect to design a house or a machinist to and design parts for, for a piece of machinery. This happens to be an architect's re visual rendering of a home in San Francisco for a really, really rich person. So this person was so rich, they decided to take advantage of the wind in San Francisco by adding a wind turbine to their house. We can go over here and we look at the floor plan. It's kind of, kind of interesting, kind of circular, really, really cool. We can look at the, at the app or the, the house from the front. We can look at it sort of from the side, from the back. And look at the performance you're seeing. This is really great. So in previous years, we've done optimizations for games in Parallels Desktop. That's great. This year, we focus on CAD CAM applications and scientific data visualization applications. So you're seeing, you're seeing here in SketchUp, you'd see a similar performance improvement in, in AutoCAD, things like this. And for our, some of our professional users, this was very important. So that's why we worked on it this year. However, what if you don't use CAD CAM applications? What are you going to see in performance increase? Let me try and show you with a more commonly installed application. So you may remember a few years ago in Parallels Desktop, we, just, we started putting the VMs in the dock because it's kind of like an application. So yeah, I have Windows 10 in the dock. Earlier I had Lion in the dock. So if I close this now, you'll see the dock icon goes away and Windows isn't running anymore. Now I want to launch it. I want to do something in PowerPoint. So I'll launch PowerPoint. And that's how long it takes now. We've cut two and a half seconds off the launch time of Windows and, and PowerPoint. And you see similar performance in other applications, especially Office and browsers and things like this. We worked really hard to make it so the user wouldn't feel, oh, I've got to launch a Windows app. I've got to launch one that's going to take some time. No, that's the kind of thing a boot camp user thinks about. We want you to think about, it's just available there. It launches even faster than some Mac applications. So that's great. So that's the kind of performance improvement you'll see in Parallels Desktop. We also had to make sure everything ran on the newest OSs that Microsoft, had, and, Microsoft and Windows and Apple has. So Mojave just came out. Our team was working on Mojave's from last May or so, whenever the first betas came out, to make sure that we ran on top of a Mojave machine. We could run Mojave as a guest OS in a window, and we could take advantage of Mojave features. So we try to do that every year, bring some goodness from the Mac over to Windows, and then lately, we're finding really good things in Windows to bring over to the Mac, like ink and things like this. So I'm going to show you a Mojave feature. So this will only work if you are, happen to be on Parallels Desktop 14. You're running Mojave as a guest OS, or Mojave as a host OS, and you happen to have an uh, iPhone or iPad that's running iOS 12. So if you have all those things, you can do this. Go up here to the menu, and it says, insert from iPhone. It found my iPhone. I want to insert a photo. This is what Apple calls continuity camera. So we'll click here. My iPhone will get activated. May I take your picture? and that gets inserted right away. No copying the file over, no nothing. So this is a Mojave feature that we have brought into Parallels Desktop because we wanted to have a really cool feature from the Mac brought over. If you are using Mojave, if you read about it, you know they now do screenshots much better. And when you take a screenshot, you automatically can edit it and so on. We have that, of course, in Parallels Desktop too. So um, we've tried to bring over good features when we can when they make sense, and make them available to people 
to blur the lines between operating systems. So you just think about what you have to accomplish, not how am I going to get this around the OS problems I have? How am I going to get that file over? It just works automatically. The last thing I'll show you in Parallels Desktop is something that came out with last year, and that's support for the touch bar. So if you happen to have an uh, iMac Pro as a touch bar, we support that. I'm going to bring the touch bar up onto my screen so you can see it. I'd love to just pick my Mac up and turn it around, but you wouldn't be able to see it anyway if I did that. So there's the touch bar. When I have Windows as the frontmost application, we automatically put the apps that you've put in your taskbar in the touch bar for you. When you launch an application that we support natively with the touch bar, like Word, as soon as Parallels Desktop figure out, figures out that Word is running, we put Word-related buttons in the touch bar. Now, we do this for all the Office apps. We do it for all the browsers that we can. We do it for Windows utilities. But there are a boatload more Windows applications that people run in Parallels Desktop. I couldn't do them all. I just don't have the time. So what we decided to do was to give you a way to design your own touch bar buttons for a Windows app. And so it looks like this. If I launch an app like, oh, let's do a common utility here. WordPad. You get generic buttons in the touch bar, because there's no support for WordPad built in. Would you like to add support? Sure. Go up here to the View menu and say, Customize touch bar for WordPad. The screen's going to change real dramatically. But this is the Apple interface for designing a touch bar. I can now say, I want this page down button. I just drag it down into the touch bar. Of course, I want Control Alt Home. I'd like emo emojis. And therefore, build a touch bar just for yourself. And when you do that, that little file gets written inside Windows. If that's really cool, you could share that with your friends. If it's really, really cool, you could send it to me, and I'll put it in the next version of Parallels Desktop and thank you in the About screen. <laughs> now, this is the Apple interface. It's enormously elegant. It's easy to use. It's great. But to get all those characteristics, they have to give up a lot of power. What if you wanted some other feature of WordPad that's not on this screen? Well, you're screwed. There's nothing you can do about that. You got these buttons and nothing else. All right? You want more power? I'll give you more power. So you can do this. If you're willing to write a little XML code, you can design any buttons you want in the touch bar. You can color them. You can change the font. You can use icons, anything you want. And this is the, I wrote this code myself. And it's not hard to do. Take that file, you put it in a special place inside Windows, you reboot Parallels Desktop, and those will always appear. Again, if you design really great buttons, share that file with your friends. If you design really, really great ones, you share it with me, and I'll put it in the next version of Parallels Desktop. So that's how I'm going to get touch bar button sets for thousands or tens of thousands of Windows apps in the next version of Parallels Desktop. OK. Those are the features I want to show you of Parallels Desktop, but I want to show you one other thing. The engineers who work on Parallels Desktop have, done, have gotten a lot of experience in designing really elegant user interfaces to bring cool Mac features over to Windows. That's great. But there are some Mac users who don't need Windows. They're just fine with the Apple programs, with the programs that are available for the Mac, they don't need anything else. Great. I should be able to help them too. And so we designed to, decided to do a product we call the Toolbox. And the Toolbox is a set of little single purpose tools that have no parameters. You basically just use them, get on with your task at hand, and move on. You don't just sit down and learn this application, you just, you just use it. A really common example is the following. 
So here's a video one of my friends did of their, of their son. It's a cool video. I'd like to share it. I'd like to keep a copy of it. Copying a video from YouTube can be hard. It can be done. Copying a video from Facebook is really, really hard. So we decided to make it really easy. We had a tool here called Download Video. All I do is drag the URL of that video to the tool. It automatically downloads the highest resolution version available. And there it's done. Click here, we can find it. There it is in, the, in my downloads folder. And I've now got that video to show to anybody I want to. That's the most commonly used tool. I'll tell you the second most commonly used tool. We have a tool that not only lets you do a, screen, a screenshot, but a screen video. You want to teach your brother or your sister how to do this one thing in the Mac. You're the Mac expert in the family. Great. Just start that tool up and do the operation. Talk while you're doing it. Make, click here, do here, do this, end. That makes a video with your voiceover. You mail it to them, and your job is done. When this tool came out about 13 months ago or so, I began getting tools, or videos, from all over the company. Kurt, here's a bug I found in Windows. Please let your Microsoft friends know about it. Kurt, here's a bug I found in the latest beta of the Mac OS. Please tell your Apple people about this. And they just come to me, because they're so easy to make, you make them and you document things that way. Or, here's a great way to teach this feature in Parallels Desktop, Kurt. You should use this in your demos. I get these all the time. They're so easy to use, and they're so easy to, to create, and you just mail them around. So the toolbox is a separate product. It happens to be bundled with Parallels Desktop. So if you buy Parallels Desktop, you get that, those tools. We made the promise when we first released Toolbox that we'll add five to six new tools each year, and we've kept that promise. We're now, now over 30 tools. We keep getting added to, keep getting things add, features added, um, and it's become very, very popular among people. Um, when I did the press tour of Parallels Desktop 14, I got almost as many questions about Toolbox as it did about Parallels Desktop. OK, that's what I wanted to tell you about today. I'm happy to try and answer questions for as long as you'd like. I see a hand. Is Parallels Toolbox available by itself? Yes, it is. Good question. I think it's, I'm going to make a guess now. I think it's $10 a year, some, some small number. 19 um, because, because we add new tools every year, we had to keep that engineering team going. So um, it, it's available also now for Windows, if you want. And if you only want a few of those tools, we have some subsets you can buy for a cheaper price. But $19 is pretty reasonable, I think. So question answered. It is available separately. If you buy Parallels Desktop, it's bundled with Parallels Desktop. Oh, sorry. Uh, can you buy Parallels Toolbox separately? And the answer is yes, you can. It's available as a su sub subscription product for $19. It's also bundled with Parallels Desktop. Other questions? Yes. Yes? How much is Parallels? Ah, good question. So Parallels Desktop comes in three editions, Standard, Pro, and Business. And they're, every, every feature in Standard is in Pro, every feature in Pro is in Business. So Business is the super version. Um, standard is available for uh, $99 if you purchase it as a perpetual product, $79 if you buy it as a subscription. Pro and Business are available at $99 a year as subscriptions. So, a person says to me, I want to run IE, or I want to run you know, Word, for, Word for Windows on my Mac. What's it going to cost me? Well, you need Parallels Desktop. You need Windows. You need Office. We're the cheapest of those three. Mm -hmm. It's not, okay, so the question is about backup and a particular uh, business partner we have a deal with. So let me tell you the, the, the hard, hard truth first, and then I'll tell you the, the business stuff. So I have Time Machine. I love it. 
time machine and any backup utility like that has one fatal flaw. And the flaw is, every time a file changes, it backs it up. That's not a flaw, right? That's a feature. Except a virtual machine, every time you boot Windows, that will change. If nothing more, it gets, gathers the correct time from the time server and writes it into the disk. My copy of Windows is about 90 gigabytes. That means every day it would back up 90 gigabytes. I have a big hard drive for backup, but that's going to fill up really quick if that's getting copied every hour that Time Machine runs a backup. So Acronis is a particular backup company that worked together with us so that wouldn't happen for virtual machines. So it will only it'll back up your virtual machine and then backs up the incremental change. Um, time Machine, other backup utilities, just look at that as a, as a big ball of dough. That's 90 gigabytes, I'll back it all up, even though only one megabyte has changed in the last time. So it backs up the whole thing. Acronis does it incremental. So that's why we entered into a business arrangement with them to recommend them as a backup utility because of the, this flaw in other backup tools. The flaw is not unique to Parallels Desktop. Any application has big files, like QuickTime. If you, if you make movies, you add a, change one little thing in that movie, the whole thing gets backed up again, all four gigabytes of it. So that's just a fundamental flaw to backup utilities, except for your Acronis. Answer your question? Okay. Other questions? I'll, I'll, I'll uh, tell you the question I get asked the most frequently, and I'll come to you in just a second. So the question is, hey, can my virtual machine with Windows get a virus? And the answer is yes. That's a full copy of Windows with all its good features, with all its strengths, and with all its weaknesses. So we really recommend you run some sort of virus application antivirus application inside of Windows to protect it. The follow-on question immediately is, can that virus ever migrate to my Mac? And the answer basically is no. A, vi a virus or malware in general takes advantage of one tiny little specific flaw in an operating system. The chance of this flaw being duplicated in a different operating system is virtually zero. So no, it can't. However, there are malware things that all they do is encrypt your documents or just they're, just they're mean, they're just erase your documents. There's a feature in Parallels Desktop where you can share the documents from your Mac documents folder. A great feature. But if Windows can see them, that malware can see them. And so that file on your Mac might get corrupted, even though the virus has not migrated from Windows to Mac. And there's still a virus on Windows, but it's hitting files that are also stored in your Mac directory. OK, you had a question. One way of making a backup is to do a clone. Mm -hmm. And so uh, is there any, anything different that one could do? Very good question. The answer is, or the question is, I want to make backups. Does having Parallels Desktop manage to do anything different? And let me show you for really quick. So here are my virtual machines. They're pretty good size. One of them is 104 gigabytes. Most of them are five or six gigabytes. They're just files. What I do is I manually copy them to a second hard drive. Uh, a friend of mine, very good friend, gave me a little drive about this big. It's SSD, Thunderbolt, um, a, a drive holds a terabyte of information. I back up the whole folder every couple of days. Or if I'm about to go on a big trip, I'll back it up just before the big trip and take that drive with me so I've got a, I can come back to recover from a big, big uh, uh, problem on, on, on the, uh, while I'm on the road. So it's just a big file, back it up. If it's running, it's a changing file. Just like if you had a Word document open and you're writing into the Word document and backup's taking place, it's going to get some version of that document, but it won't get every keystroke. So same thing is, is true in spades for virtual machines. So we recommend you shut them down, back them up as ordinary files, and go from there. You can back these up 
in Time Machine. But if you do so, it's going to back up often. So because of that, we have this feature. Don't back this up with Time Machine, because I know it would fill up my Time Machine drive too quickly. So we allow you to turn it off, not have that big flaw, but then you have to manage your backups manually. Or every night have something, carbon, carbon copy cloner run and make a backup of it. Absolutely. It's just a file. Uh, sort of both. Okay. Uh, we write some stuff so that Time Machine knows not to back these up, and also that the Windows knows not not being backed up. Other questions? Yes. So earlier in the question and answer session, we had comments about older hardware and not talking. So if you're running, so if you have a piece of hardware. So, uh, I, I may try and rephrase your question, and if I don't answer it the right way, let, let me know. So, what about virtual machines and hardware specs and older, older OSs, older hardware, and so on? How do you deal with all that? So, the perspective of Parallels Desktop, we always run on the current OS, one back, and one forward. So, we just added Mojave support to this. We just cut out Yosemite support as the host OS for Parallels Desktop 14. However, you can run it, you can run older Mac OSs, like I, I ran Lion on here. I don't think I could install Lion as the host OS in this machine. I don't think it would work at all, but I can run it as a virtual machine. So I can, I can go back as far as Snow Leopard server for virtual machines for fun. And I, you saw I had XP there. I still have XP running on my machine. I believe you could install Windows 3.1 and DOS. The biggest problem is going to be not, not running them. It's the installation media, because those shipped on diskettes. How are you going to read a diskette? So that, you run into problems like that, physical problems. Um, but yes, they all work. And we have a huge web page on our site of all the OSs that we've tested. And it's basically all the versions of Windows and all the systems service packs and so on you'd ever want to talk about. So you can go back in time. Apple doesn't like it, but you can go forward in time. So I want to run a future OS, <coughs> Mac OS, for example, or Windows OS, in a virtual machine to test it. It's a really great way. If you like living on the cutting edge, but don't, don't want to risk anything, I've been running insider previews of Windows 10 since they announced the program. And I ran, ran early versions of, of Mojave as beta OSs in a virtual machine, again, since they, since, they, since they released it at the developers conference. So it's a great way, because suppose that OS, that beta OS, has some huge, horrible flaw in it. It's going to be constrained to your, that, that virtual machine. You just throw it away. So it won't harm the rest of your drive. Only know the rest of your drive is there. You know, just that one file won't be damaged. You throw it away and start again. How do you, how do you delete, you know, like an older operating system or that? It's very, very easy to do. The question is, how do you delete an operating system or install one? So I don't want to actually delete it, but I'll show you what you do. Suppose I no longer wanted to have XP on my machine. Remove. It'll give me two choices. Hey, throw it all in the trash, or just leave it in your, in your, in your folder, but just don't have it on the list. Those are the two choices you have. So like I said, here is a, a developer version of Mojave 10.14.2, which isn't available to you yet, only available to developers. And here is a. I think. Oh, I took it off. I must have some room. Ah, 
Uh, here's an insider preview of Windows 10 that just came out from, Windows, from Microsoft. So I do this a lot. I'm weird. Um, and I, I need to be on the cutting edge. You have to tell people what's, what's happening. And we'll send a bug report into Microsoft. We'll send a bug report into Apple. And they like getting these. Um, so um, it's a good thing to do if you have the time. Question answered? Last question. Yes? You said you thought that the, if you just want to buy the program rather than get the subscription, that it was $99? I think so. Well, I'm looking on your website. And the way I read it, it looks like you can buy the home edition or the, you know, the, the parallel desktop for home and student use for $80. $79.99. And then on the same page, it has the pro edition, $99.99 a year. A year. No, and that first thing I, I'm quoting you, it doesn't have the per year. So uh, yeah, th yeah, there are some options that aren't, aren't easily seen on that page. But you, you, for, for the home edition, that's what I call standard, standard, you have the choice of perpetual license or subscription. We don't tell you about, a lot about that. For pro, you only have the choice of subscription. For business, you only have the choice of sub sub subscription. Maybe I misunderstood you. I thought you said you paid extra for the perpetual on the home no. standard. Oh, then I misspoke. I'm sorry about that. It's the other way around. You paid extra for the perpetual. So the subscription is a lower price. Sorry. Sure, I've had a couple of things too. Do you want to have oh, I was just going to quickly ask about um, like hardware, you know, printers, scanners, set up. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the basic answer is the following Make it work with your Mac. We'll piggyback on that. And you don't have to worry about it after that. However, if you happen to have a printer or some other peripheral that has unique Windows drivers that give you features you don't have on the Mac, then you can install those, that drivers inside Windows and connect that device directly to, to Windows. When you plug in a USB device, a dialog comes up and says, Which, where do you want to connect this, to Mac or to Windows? Like, for example, when, that, when I plugged in that tablet, it gave me that dialog and I said, right to the tablet, right to Windows. So you have that choice. Then you get those extra features available to you. That makes sense? Yeah. But if you, I, I don't do that for the network. I don't do that for the mouse or for the keyboard. Those we just make work. Make the networking work on Mac, and we'll automatically pick back on it. Question answered? Quick comment on the, uh, the virus issue. Yes. For someone who has used Parallels, uh, and I think a lot of people use it for one or two programs, just stay off the internet. If you buy a professional application from a well-known company, and when you're in Windows, don't go into a browser. You will not get viruses. I agree. I'll even give you an example that shows that in spades. I had a person call me up and say, my company has an application that we have to run. It only runs on XP. I don't have the source code anymore. We can't get it modified. I've just got to have XP. But I'm terrified that with XP no longer being maintained by Microsoft, I'll get viruses, I'll get malware, yada. So what I told him was, no problem. Get a Mac, get Parallels Desktop, put XP into it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then use it as a setting in Parallels Desktop. Don't connect this virtual machine to anything outside in the outside world. Keep it isolated from the, from the host, everything else, and it's just there. If you want to get a file out of it, you have to drag the file out like I did drag and drop earlier. And you can do that, and they do that, and they feel very safe. So you can, in fact, or, or another counterexample, I talked last week with a guy, a Mac security researcher, who wants to get viruses. He wants to study them. He does it in a virtual machine, then he can throw it away, and nobody gets, nobody gets, gets damaged. So and in fact, some viruses are now detecting if they're in a virtual machine, and they turn themselves off. That's another story. Um, so yes, you can be as isolated as you want. You can be as connected as you want. And you get to choose that. OK? And how cheap do you think you can get a legitimate copy of Windows 10 if uh, they're looking at the whole price package? Windows 10 Home, I think, is about 100 bucks. Uh, Windows 10 Pro is $200. Um, the real deal is with Office. 
if you buy Office 365, you get five installs for like, I think, it's either 100 or 80 bucks a year. Five installs. That's my Mac at home, my Mac at work, my iPad, my phone, and one spare one. That, I told Microsoft, that's cheap at twice the price. It really is. Off at 365, it's just do it. It's just like nothing. And as a Microsoft alumni, I admit I get it for free, but I would have paid that $100 fee a year for no problem at all. Five installs, that's great. If you don't pay for Windows, you can't change the desktop picture. That's the only thing I've seen. Can't do any customization, but it still works. And you get little annoying dialogues every once in a while, and you get a little, little watermark, but it's otherwise, go for it. OK, I hope this was useful. I hope you, you see how easy it is to run Windows applications on your Mac, no rebooting. They launch as fast or even faster than Mac apps. And the integration has got to be seen to be believed. It's really, really slick. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.